Hello everyone! So today, I am here to recommend some must-read romance book with the trope of marriage of convenience. Before anything else, I want to apologize for the background noise. There's a construction going on in our street and I've been waiting for them to stop so that I could film again but then fast forward three weeks later and still they haven't finished their work so here I am filming despite all the noise I hope you don't mind my first recommendation is a historical romance by Kate Bateman this Earl of Mine is about Georgina who is a shipping heiress and ever since her father died and left her with a lot of money a lot of men are trying to marry her so they can have her money for themselves georgina is great at rejecting this man but when her cousin tried to set her up into a scandal so she would be forced to marry that cousin georgina realized that she needed a plan to secure her wealth and the shipping industry that her father passed on to her so what she did was that she planned to marry a condemned criminal who was about to be hung at midnight. That way, she can ensure that she would be married and widowed at the same day. However, when she went into the prison cell where she bribed the guard for her scheme, she found out that the man she was about to marry have died because of his wounds. And since there was no other man to be hung, that means that Georgina can either wait for the next schedule of execution or she can marry the other man in the cell. The other man in the cell is not condemned for execution, however, he is bound to be transferred via ship into another continent because of his crimes. Georgina realized that it would be more beneficial for her to marry this man than to become a widow because she knew that if she became a widow, that won't stop the other men from trying to marry her so they can get her fortune. But if she's a married woman with a husband in prison in another continent, that means no one can get her money because she's not allowed to marry again as long as her husband is still alive. So she paid the guards and when midnight came, she became a married woman. She thought that the criminal she married will be transferred when morning came, but to her utter horror, after a few days, she saw the same man she married walking the street freely. So she went to investigate what happened and she found out that the man she married is not a criminal at all but an undercover Bow Street man and he was only there in that prison cell to investigate a certain individual for his mission. Worst of it all, that man used his real name when he signed the marriage contract. So now, Georgina's plan backfired and she had to deal with the consequences of her actions. I really love the premise of this book because it is so unique plus I also love that Georgina is a businesswoman and that she is not just good at her job but that she loves it too. I also really love Benedict's occupation because it is so interesting since they are trying to find this submarine which is the very first submarine of their times. Overall, this plot is very entertaining and the characters are very amazing so it is a very good read. The next book that I want to recommend is for those who want to read Marriage of Convenience Trope paired with Enemies to Lovers or Hate to Love Aspect and that is Call Me Crazy by Melanie Harlow. This book is about Enzo Morete who needs to get married in order not to lose his promised position as CEO in his family's construction company to his younger brother. But the problem is that his girlfriend broke up with him the day he planned to propose. He is running out of time so when Bianca De Rose suggests that they enter a marriage of convenience, he has no choice but to agree. However, he is not sure if he and Bianca can survive long enough to make this marriage believable to their parents considering that Bianca hates him since they were just kids. Bianca suggested this marriage of convenience because for years she wanted to have a baby but her longtime boyfriend doesn't want to have one. So when her boyfriend broke up with her, she planned to get pregnant despite the doctor saying that the chance of her having a baby is very slim to none because of some complications. 
When she overheard Inza's problem, she realized that they could help one another. She could help him get his company and he could help her get pregnant. Obviously, trigger warning for infertility issues, but if we subtract that factor, this book is very low angst and it is full of easy, joyful days. If you want to read a book with marriage of convenience trope paired with angst and a little bit of darkness, then I suggest picking up 10 Days to Love a Duke by Kerrigan Byrne. This book is about Lady Alexander Lane who is very smart and independent, but behind her professional success, she has a very dark past. When she was just a young girl and she was still studying, the head of their school took advantage of her and she ended up killing him in self-defense. She knew that no one would believe her that what happened was due to self-defense, so to protect her and her family from ruination, she and her friends buried the body in the school grounds. She thought that she could escape her past by forgetting it, but then someone started blackmailing her. She ended up paying her blackmailer in the span of 10 years just so her secrets would not be revealed. But now, her family is facing bankruptcy and she's so worried that her secrets might be revealed to the public. So, she ended up doing what any broke lady of her situation would do, and that is marry a rich bachelor. Lady Lane and Duke Redmayne entered a marriage of convenience because they both needed one another. She needed the Duke's money and the Duke needed a bride as a revenge to his ex fiance The Duke had been a handsome man once, but he was also very adventurous. So one day, during one of his adventures, a tiger sliced his face. He was in the verge of death, so he sent a letter to his fiance telling her that he might not make it alive. But he did make it alive only to come home and find out that his fiancé married his cousin who is next in line as a duke if he ever dies. He is so angry with what happened that he agrees with Lady Lane's proposal and this is their love story. I really like the dynamic of our two characters and I also really appreciated how the author healed Lady Lane's trauma. She did not just brush it off, instead she showed us that even if the heroine is starting to fall for the hero, that, that does not mean that her body can just easily forget what happened. Throughout the whole book, we saw Lady Alexandra's healing and it was a very beautiful even though, if it, even though it is a slow process. My next recommendation is An Alien Romance by Regine Abel. I know that we should not judge the book by its cover, but I also could not deny the fact that ma the majority of us do judge the book by its cover. And the very first time that I saw this cover and title, I was very hesitant to read it because look at it. I mean, look at it. But then I heard a lot of people in the internet talking about this book and how sweet it was. They said that it was low angst and I was particularly on the mood for those things so I picked this up and oh boy I was so glad that I did. Our heroine Susan is a third daughter and in their planet, which is a farming colony, the first daughter inherits the land and the family keeps the second daughter so that if ever something happens to the first daughter, they still have a spare to manage their land. So our heroine basically gets nothing and to save herself from starvation, she enters in an arranged marriage through the Intergalactic Primating Agency. And then the agency paired her with a lizard man named Olex. When Susan agreed to go through with this marriage, the agency shipped her off into Oleg's planet and during the course of their marriage, Susan learned a lot of things and same goes to Oleg's. Both of them did their best to adjust and compromise so they can have a very harmonious marriage. They both respected one another and they have a very healthy relationship despite the fact that they have a very different culture since Olex is part of the hunter's tribe. And since Olex is the chief of their tribe, he has a lot of responsibilities on his shoulder and Susan helped him with that. 
the animals near Oleg's tribe are getting scarce, so his people are facing starvation. But since they have a very wide land, Susan figured out that maybe she can use her farming skills to help them plant foods that they can eat. However, Oleg's people have been colonized years ago and they were turned into farming slaves. So when they gained their independence, they vowed to never touch soil and to never farm again, thus them being hunters. But Susan believed that if they don't change their beliefs, they might face starvation so it is up to her to help them. My last recommendation is Marriage for One by Ayla Mays and this book is a great choice if you want marriage of convenience trope with slow-born romance. This book is about Rosie who have just been recently dumped by her fiancé and her uncle who was supposed to help her open her dream coffee shop just also recently died and now she's on the brink of losing her dream because she can't afford to open her coffee shop all on her own. But then, her uncle's attorney, Jack, approaches her and he proposes a marriage of convenience. Due to what was written on his uncle's will, Jack found out that the space that Rosie was supposed to use for her coffee shop could be inherited by whoever Rosie marries. And since the space is in the middle of New York, Rosie could not afford to buy it or even rent it. So she and Jack made a deal. The two of them got married so Rosie could use the space to open her coffee shop so she could at least get back the money she invested by buying the expensive coffee machine. They never planned to stay married that long but then one thing led to another and the two of them fell in love. I really love this book because of Jack. He is so cold and detached that every time he does something sweet, I am always so surprised. And there's also a caretaking scene in here, plus the small moments between him and Rosie are always so soon worthy. Jack's patience, his discipline, and the thing that he does to help Rosie just really melts my heart. So if you are into Slowborn, if you like Grumpy and Cold Hero, and if you like Marriage of Convenience Trope, then this book would really suit you. Plus, there's a lot of baking and coffee. Alright guys, that's my recommendation for romance books with Marriage of Convenience Trope. Let me know down below if you have already read these books or not. And please comment down some books with this similar trope so I can add them on my TBR. See you next time! Bye!